Yo, Fox Marine here, and it's been a while since I put up a useful or informative video. But I actually had a good reason this time. I wasn't focusing on making memes, I was struggling on how to answer the following question. Which is what is my favorite dungeon in FF14? The answer to that of course is Hawk Manor, but I got stuck in answering why. So I went back, I took notes, and this is why. Now I largely struggled with this video because of how I should approach it. Do I assume that you know what Hawk Manor is and I get into my thoughts? Or do I do a step-by-step -step guide? I feel like if I stepped into the meat of the matter, I'd be robbing you of why this dungeon is so awesome in terms of gameplay, lore, and design. So I'll try to cover as much as I could. So if by any small chance you're new and you need a quick guide, you could still find some use for this. Dungeon Review Basically, this guy over here gives you a quest to check out this new dungeon you've unlocked. After a hop and a skip, you reach there, and if you're a DPS and you have been queuing for 40 minutes, you have my sympathies. Once inside, you go room to room, getting keys to progress. Some are optional rooms, so a bit of beforehand knowledge of the next door would be useful for tanks. The first boss is the Manor Clavenger. She has a sweet steel tank buster, so put up your cooldowns if your tank is at a lower item level. Here and there, she will cast a void fire circle AoE, so be sure to avoid those. Once her health reaches a certain point, she will also cast the dark mist AoE. Getting hit by that would give a terror debuff, which locks you in place, so try to avoid those as well. Beating her drops the green key to access the basement. Take the clockwise path here, getting at least one tiny key to open one of the rooms containing the yellow key. Continue clockwise past the ramp and go into the previously locked room you saw earlier and step into the south cellar. Here you go up against the manor steward and the manor jester. The steward casts a soul drain AoE. Getting hit by it grants the steward a self heal, the jester casts blizzard here and there. Tanks can simply tank and pull while the healer can continue healing and the DPS bringing damage. Pick up the bloody parchment the bosses drop and I need to emphasize this because this confused me my first time. Use your return skill to get back to the start of the dungeon, or walk there. Use the bloody parchment to break the seal at the top of the stairs. Taking down the manor sentry mini boss at the top opens up the main bedroom for the dungeon's final boss. Her attacks are simple and straightforward. She casts Fire, Void Fire, and Void Thunder. Just your standard spank and tank fight, the DPS should take down the Void Lamps if the party is a bit on the lower level side. And congrats, you've finished Hawk Manor! Stay safe, thanks for watching. Of course, I'd do that if this was just a dungeon guide. I'll link below some of the better videos better content creators have made and maybe hopefully you folks will continue back to this point of the video because I just really like this part of the game. And for those actually curious about what makes Hawk Manor so compelling, let me rewind for a bit. Let's go back to the beginning. You, as the Warrior of Light, are tasked with investigating a series of murders, which kind of stands out given how the rest of A Realm Reborn isn't as dark. A homicide investigation isn't a regular occurrence in Eorzea. 
Your investigation leads you to this guy at Old Gridania, Ursendo, a former butler of Lady Amandine. And he's asking us to investigate Hawk Manor because... Well, I'll get to that later even if he does say it at first. So you head on south past New Gridania and into the Central Shroud via the Blue Badger Gate. At level 28, the much closer and more convenient White Wolf Gate is still closed off. From the Blue Badger Gate, go southeast along the path until you see a large route going up. Alternatively, you can just teleport to Bent Branch Meadows and go northeast, but for this review, I'd like to keep the entire experience grounded, and you'll see why. So you go up the route and onto the wooden platform, and the quest actually gives you a choice you wouldn't normally make. Would you continue immersing yourself as a citizen of Eorzea and take the long, winding dirt path west? Or do you head southwest and cut through the forest, relying on the minimap just like what I did? This doesn't seem like much of a choice, but I want to show you the consequences of cutting through the forest. You'll most likely deal with an assortment of aggressive enemies and one or two large halostropers. And of course, right outside the mansion are stropers and floating eyes in the courtyard. Because maybe I'm stupid, but I died getting here the first time around level 28. I'm willing to bet the house that I'm not alone. Now let's go back to the long winding path earlier. I took this route without a map and I still got lost. But past that, this dirt path was the safer option. You still had to deal with the stropers and floating eyes, but you could see them from afar and you could probably sneak by. Once in the courtyard, I've noticed a few things apart from the floating eyes which, by the way, are unique to this area. There doesn't seem to be any major overgrowth, but the presence of weeds and dried leaves indicate a lack of maintenance for an extended period of time. I looked around hoping to see any sort of backyard, but the game doesn't allow me to look that far. What I found most strange were two things. First were these cages on the side that looked like it could be lowered below. What exactly they bring to and from the basement? Well, certainly nothing small. The other thing of note is this small entrance to the basement that's been chained up. And if you're familiar with this dungeon, well, it's a little unsettling. Now the most eye-catching feature of the mansion itself is the large glowing stained glass window out in front. Whether night or day, this behemoth is just glowing. And once inside, it's glowing because of this seal at the top of the stairs. Why is it there? Well, to keep us from getting to the dungeon boss, of course. So let's go break that seal. The northern wing for this floor and the second floor is closed off. The first room to the left is an office. With it being so close to the entrance, I would surmise that official business with people of higher status was conducted here. The next room over on the southeast seems to be a relic room with jars, swords, shields, and a rifle? Either we were clued in on machinists since a realm were born, or we may get another ranged DPS. But that shit's speculation at this point, so sorry. Also, it was at this point I noticed that paintings were just frames and no actual paintings. Ah, oh, damn it, looks like I have to go back to actually explain this as well. The next two rooms in the middle look to be offices for clerical and bookkeeping work. I guess if you're this loaded, yeah, you gotta pay taxes, I guess. Not that I can relate. The southwest room is the music room and save for one toppled chair, looks to be untouched. <laughs> Bards. The west and northwest rooms both are storage areas with the northwest one looking fully stocked. The final room on the first floor is the red hall which basically is the mansion's ballroom, implying that there were social functions being held here. Now check out what's in front of this basement door before we've only seen rooms and hallways and general disarray and neglect. Not bloodstains, fresh ones. It's easy to miss yet it's a big indicator of what's to come. Behind the ivy door is a comically large storage area. Given its size and proximity to the main hall, it probably holds a large percentage of the mansion supplies. The floor here has collapsed, boxes and barrels have been tipped over, and stuff looks missing from the shelves. This room has seen the worst of it. Down in the basement, which is more dungeon than basement, 
you see more blood stains. Not just on the floor, but on the walls as well. The southwest, southeast, and northwest rooms are basically prisons. Ignoring the prison bars for a bit, each of these holding cells has these medieval restraints. The northeast room has smithing tongs, tridents, spears, axes, a guillotine, a torture rack complete with a hammer to break bones. The yellow room itself has more torture devices, some that don't even make sense. The cages we saw from the front yard earlier are also here. There's a water pump on the southwest corner to clean things up. Here we don't get a key but a bloody parchment. The bloody parchment itself is described as the arcane text scrawled upon this page appears to have been written in blood. Could it be a clue to breaking the area's seal barrier? Why yes, yes it is. The second floor has even more blood stains. As elegant as this part of the mansion looks, it's probably not a huge stretch to think that even more death has happened here than in the basement below. Another room of note is the easily ignored locked room to the side. Interestingly enough, this room is guarded by unique attack hounds and a servitor's lantern, and has the only other lit fireplace in the mansion. Which brings us to Lady Amandine's room which, even being the main bedroom of the manor, looks just as fucked as any room here. You got shredded curtains, wrecked flooring, and tossed furniture, cobwebs despite a lack of spiders here, and one tormented soul. It's the one soul that Ursandel has served faithfully until the very end. On the trail of murders, he speculates that his former master might be behind it all. Because of the scars she suffered during the calamity, she spared no expense at achieving beauty. She was vain and wanted no reminder of those injuries. Those empty frames may have been of her and her family. There are no mirrors in the mansion. Whatever remnant of humanity that remained was long gone the day she resorted to torturing and using victims to maintain her youth. This is what Ursandel wanted us to stop. He needed us to stop the madness. I'd like to think that the one other room on the second floor with the lit fireplace belonged to Ursando. As that room remained lit and warm to the very end, so did his loyalty and guilt for his mistress. Yes, I know there's a hard version that explores the rest of the mansion, but it more or less reinforces my points in this video. This dungeon is an experience from the setup to the mansion itself, the story encompassing it. In terms of design, it's unique. We were not spared any details. It was purposeful. I'd like to think nothing here was made on a whim nor an accident. My big problem with a lot of dungeons in 14 is that most are super linear, and that's not the case with this one. You have an asymmetrical layout, you need to backtrack a little, there are ways for you to get lost and engross yourself in the experience. It almost feel like a game of its own. Like, you and a group of friends investigating a series of murders, wandering through a forest filled with vile creatures, you end up in this mansion that's more maze than a house. Backtracking and finding dead ends, you slowly uncover a dark secret, and in the end, you fight a large monstrosity. Yeah, it sounds awesome. And unique. So, if you're a new player and you come across the quest Skeletons in Her Closet, take your time with it and enjoy Hawk Manor, my favorite dungeon in Final Fantasy XIV. Until then, stay safe. Thanks for watching. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that. Please like, share, and subscribe if you want more FF14 content. You have been warned, there are no guarantees.